Now we will discuss regarding the neuromuscular disorders of the esophagus. Now, neuromuscular disorders can be seen in the esophagus either in the form of diverticular or as pure or as pure motor disorders. Now, diverticula are an anatomical uh, seen anatomical uh, problem associated with the neuromuscular disorders. The most diverticular are a result of a primary motor abnormality of the upper esophagic sphincter or a lower esophagic sphincter. Suppose there is pressure in the lower esophagic sphincter or upper esophagic sphincter. The foot cannot push down and as a result there can be a diverticulum in the segment above that sphincter. The pharyngeal the diverticula can be classified into pharyngoesophageal diverticulum, midosophageal diverticulum or epiphrenic diverticulum. False, there, there can be false diverticula and there can be true diverticula. You can see the true diverticulum here which includes all, includes the muscle, the mucosa and the serosa. All the layers of the esophagus are seen in the true diverticulum. Whereas in the pseudo diverticulum or a false diverticulum, there are no, there is no, there is no complete, all, all the layers of the esophagus or all the layers of the wall of the viscous is not present. Only the mucosa comes out through the other layers. The examples of pseudo diverticula are Zenger's diverticulum, where are the example of true diverticulum are the Meckel's diverticulum. Now coming to the pharyngoesophageal diverticulum or the Zenger's diverticulum. They occur between the thyropharynges and the cricopharynges. You can see here, this is the thyro uh, thyroid cartilage and the type to the pharynges, thyropharynges, which, are, which have oblique fibers, and cricopharynges here has uh, transverse fibers, and the space in between is called the Killian's dehiscence and through these Killian's dehiscence comes the Zenger's diverticulum or the pharyngoesophageal diverticulum. The patient can present with halitosis, regurgitation of foul, undigested material or a feeling of food sticking in the throat. Now the cricopharyngeal diverticulum is due to a pulsion diverticulum. We can see only the mucosa is coming out. And it is also due to the cricopharyngeal epilepsy. Due to the tight spasm of the cricopharynges, cricopharynges, what happens is that the mucosa is forced down through the defect above. Now, the, it is the most common esophageal diverticulum too. You can see the barium swallow image here. You can see the diverticulum, or the, the Zenger's diverticulum. Now, what is the treatment? The treatment can be either a surgical treatment, which includes diverticulopexy, or a diverticulectomy. In case of larger diverticulum, the diverticulum is excised more than 5 cm. Whatever may be the case, if the if the myotomy is not performed in the cricopharyngeal muscle, what will happen that the diverticulum is going to recur. In order to decrease the tone of the cricopharyngeal muscle, the cricopharyngeal myotomy is done and after the diverticulectomy or the diverticulopexy. Now, the endoscopic procedure is called the Dolman's procedure. What happens in the Dolman's procedure? First, we can see the endoscopic view of the Diverticulum of the pharyngoesophageal. This you can see the diverticulum here. Now, in a, an endoscope is passed as shown in the figure with one limb into the diverticulum and the other limb into the esophagus, and it is stapled so that instead of the instead the wall in between them becomes cut through, and uh, an anastomosis is formed between the diverticulum and the esophagus, uh, cancelling of the diverticulum. That is how that happens in the endoscopic Dolman's procedure. Endoscopic Dolman's procedure is better for a of medium sized diverticulum, larger diverticulum, diverticulectomy is good, smaller diverticulum, diverticulum, the Dolman's procedure then does not give adequate myotomy and for this reason uh, the uh, procedure may be a failure. For, so, Dolman's procedure, endoscopic procedure is better in the uh, medium diverticulum rather than a smaller or a larger diverticulum. Now, coming to the midisophageal diverticulum, this is the barium swallow picture of the midisophageal diverticulum, they are true diverticulums and the attraction diverticulum. The lymph nodes here, you can see the lymph nodes, the tuberculous lymph nodes which can uh, which can attach to the esophageal wall and take all the layers to the of the esophagus as a diverticulum. This is the true divert this is a true diverticulum and the right side is more common due to the abundance of the structures on the left side of the thorax, the diverticulum on the right side is more common than the left. Okay, we, we, need, a, we need a CT for the assessment to have, assess the lymph nodes. We have to do an endoscopy to rule out any esophageal bronchial or esophageal or tracheoesophageal fistula and a manometry to rule out whether there is, is due to a, whether the etiology is due to the traction or the inflamed lymph nodes 
or is there any associated primary motor disorders along with the midesophageal diverticulum. Now, diverticular epoxy is, is, is necessary in symptomatic cases. Many of the cases are asymptomatic and plus or minus esophagomyotomy depending upon whether it is a motor disorder or a inflammatory lymph node. If it is a motor disorder, it is underlying cause, we may require an esophageal myotomy. But if it is only due to the traction of the, due to the inflamed lymph node, we will not require esophagomyotomy. That is regarding the midesophageal diverticulum. Now, coming to the epiphanic diverticula, it is within in the distal one third of the esophagus. We can see the epiphanic diverticula, the distal one third of the esophagus. If this is the varium swallow image of the epiphanic diverticula. This is more common again like midesophageal diverticula, it is more common on the right side and it is associated with achalasia cardi and non-specific esophageal motility disorders. Even though achalasia cardi is the most common cause for the increased uh, spasm of the lower esophageal sphincter, non-specific -esoph non esophageal motility disorder is the most common cause for the epiphanic diverticula. Diverticulopexy, where diverticulopexy is the treatment, myotomy is required if, if it is due to the increased tone of the achalasia cardia, which the manometric studies increased tone of the lower esophageal sphincter. The manometric studies will help us to identify whether, what is the original cause for the increase, whether there is increased lower esophageal sphincter or tone or not. Okay, thank you.